you're a Nordic skier, and I don't know a lot about Nordic skiing, so can you kind of just tell me a little bit about it? Yeah, it's, like, mainly, like, big endurance sport. Um, It's very unique. Like, I guess it's, I don't know, when people Nordic ski for the first time, they don't necessarily enjoy it that much because it's really painful. Um, It's just, like, skiing uphill. Like, if you're alpine skiing, like, basically we go up what you go down so it's like very taxing on the body um and it's yeah it's I guess it's kind of similar I always compare it to running I guess just like really cardio heavy and also I mean you need strength too but yeah it's like all-encompassing so yeah what got you into this um yeah so actually my both my parents skied My dad's from Norway, and Norway is like a big cross-country skiing country, so he grew up skiing, and then I don't really know how my mom got into it, but yeah, they both skied uh, for the University of Colorado um, in Boulder, and then yeah, they kind of, like, when I was probably like two or three, they got me and my siblings on ski, so I've been skiing forever, um, and yeah, competing for quite a while, too. Um, So it's funny. I just did a story that's also going to air in our Olympic zone um, Mm -hmm. about, it's called, it's this program, they have a name called Winter Kids, and it's like getting kids outdoors because Maine's winters are so long. Um, When you were a kid growing up in Maine, how important was it for you to like get outside and play outside and, you know, learn to skate? Yeah, I mean, as soon as you said that, I thought of like, whenever we had a snow day, I would always go out with my friends and we would like ski to the grocery store or we just like ski on the roads and like every opportunity like I know now every time I'm home there's like not a ton of snow in Maine um and so we would always just like get so excited when there was a snowstorm and getting out and like taking advantage of the snow we got. Tell me a little bit more about that you you, skiing was like a form of transportation for you? Yeah (laughs) I think that was like it's funny like I I spent quite a bit of time in Norway too and like I think I've probably gotten it from there like it's kind of normal to in the winter like yeah ski to the grocery store ski to do errands um um, just as like in a more interesting way than uh, walking I guess but yeah I don't know like for me it's like obviously a very competitive thing for me now but it's what's great is that it's like also such a recreational sport and like so everyone gets into it which is pretty cool yeah so I mean Maine has I mean Sunday River Sugarloaf all the like resorts people can go skiing at all the time you know did you feel like growing up in Maine it was like obviously you ski I would not say so I think maybe alpine skiing is definitely pretty big like you just mentioned all those resorts um I think like, definitely in southern Maine, where I grew up, it was, like, a huge deal at my high school. Like, I went to Yarmouth High School, and Nordic skiing was, like, one of the big sports, and it was really cool. Like, we always tried to win states, um, so it was, like, a big uh, community there, but, and, like, I think, but, yeah, like, I guess knowing people from other schools, like, it mainly, it wasn't super big, and I know now like I ski with people all from all across the country and like I know west coast like Vermont and Alaska like they all have really really established Nordic programs and I guess I kind of now noticed how much fewer opportunities there are in in Maine like outside of just skiing for your high school and obviously like that's not the end of the world like I made it work and but it's just really interesting to see like that's why I say that it's not maybe like a go-to Nordic skiing in Maine um, just because yeah there's not the most opportunity. So we're going to the Olympics that's very yeah. exciting congratulations. Is this <laughs> your you. first time? Yep yeah okay. so yeah I was I was thinking of that like when I so right now I'm 21 and last time the Ol- Olympics happened was yeah 2018 and like I was watching them obviously, but it wasn't really on my radar or like I was like, oh that that looks pretty cool. Like I don't know, maybe one day. But there was never any like, all right, next Olympics, I'm gonna try to make it. Um, I think not until about a year ago was it really like 
one of my big goals to make it this year. What are you, so I know you said you were in Europe. Where are you now? Right now I'm in Italy. Um, okay. We have a pre-camp at, cause the Olympics are at, or we're racing at pretty high elevation. And so we're doing a little altitude camp cool. in Italy before heading over there. Yeah. So you're with Team USA in Italy? Yep. Exactly. Okay, cool. Um, so you guys will be heading to um, Beijing pretty soon. What are you most looking forward to? This is your first Olympics. Yeah, it's a little bit hard just with all of the COVID. Like, I've talked to people who have gone in the past, and they talk about, oh, like, opening ceremonies, all, like, like meeting everyone from different teams and doing all these activities in the Olympic Village, um, which obviously are not really going to be um, possible this year. But I think – it's still like such a spectacle and I'm so I guess like I really do want to do well in the races that I do have but I'm really there just to like kind of embrace the whole thing and I think it's going to really motivate me to try to or like go in four years and like go for the results like I want to do well and yeah like I yeah obviously I still want to I'm going to do all I can to race well but for right now it's really just to try to experience it all um but yeah I know it's probably hard um with COVID I mean we're all still yeah. kind of living with it um <laughs> right you know I'm assuming like your parents can't go like friends who might be right. interested um are they gonna have any sort of like watch parties or anything like that to like try to cheer you on yeah I've heard of there's gonna be a watch party in Park City I think that they're some I think my like they'll fly out your family um I, I'm assuming my parents will go to that so, so that'll I think that'll be cool for them um I, I know especially my dad my dad is very bummed he's not able to come but yeah another reason to hopefully go again in four years <laughs> so yeah like there will be COVID restrictions but it's still the Olympic Games you know right um yeah so is there like opening ceremonies is that kind of like what you're like is that when it's gonna like sink in for you yeah, unfortunately, the, our team is not, we're not going just because of COVID concerns. Um, but I think probably like once I'm on the race line, it's going to sink in. One just, there's like quite a few young people um, on the team this year. And we are all like scared to get excited about going just because of there's so much that could go wrong and like testing positive and that kind of taking the, the whole thing away from us and so it's right now we're like all kind of living on the edge like oh god is it gonna happen so it probably won't really sink in until we're actually there on the race or like on the start line um but yeah I mean it definitely it still feels really super really surreal <laughs> yeah I mean talk to me I know COVID has heightened I'm sure all of your stress levels um like mm -hmm. are, are you stressed to compete or are you stressed about like a potential positive like what you know where where or how do you feel in general like where where are you yeah at? I think I'm mostly just really excited to race like there's I'll, I'll I'll always be nervous but like I'm not necessarily stressed about the racing um I think the stress does come mostly just I want to make it there so badly that I just I really don't want to get COVID um which everyone's in that boat right now so yeah, it's almost nice that that takes away from this, the stress of racing, I guess, in a way. So what are the races you're going to be participating in? Yeah, so it's a little complicated. Um, a lot of it depends on, like, how people are doing there. Um, and, like, right now I only have one guaranteed start, which is the 30K skate which is actually the very last day of the Olympics. Um, so I'll be there quite a while, but there is, I'm like the alternate to do some of the other distance races as well. So I guess, yeah, there's a lot of the time things can happen and a spot opens up. Um, so yeah, I won't have a ton of starts this go, but if I get one, I'll be really, I'll be pretty happy. What do you want people to know about growing up in Maine and becoming an Olympian? Like, how did Maine help you? Like, tell me a little bit about that. 
Yeah, that's a good question. I think, like, for sure, I am so proud of, like, how I got to where I am today and, like, so glad that Maine is where I learned how to ski. And for me, like, when I was skiing in high school and, at yeah, in Yarmouth, I had like big goals, but I really just did skiing for the love of like the love of skiing and the community is like, it was so fun high school skiing. I always think about that. Um, And like the past few years have really escalated in like my results. Um, So I guess, yeah, I don't know. That doesn't really answer your question, but (laughs) like, it's just, I've always been super proud to be from Maine and have kind of my own story to making it here um and yeah like I'm still in contact with a lot of the skiers that are in high school there or like skiing in college in Maine and I al- like I always want to have that connection um and be like this tangible person who also is making it on the international level um yeah it sounds like your high school I just got a message and got distracted. <laughs> it yeah, sounds like your um your high school experience was really like impactful for you skiing at Yarmouth High School. Tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah, I think part of the like what made me love skiing so much at Yarmouth was like how team involved it was, like how ha- like really truly wanting everyone on the team to do well and like working towards the goal of state ch- like state champs was like the biggest deal. It was so such a cool feeling and I definitely lost that a bit and it wasn't until then that I like realized how much I missed that like even though it wasn't like the highest intense or like the most intense competition it was so cool to like not just be racing for yourself um and like I started like there's definitely a bit of that in college and just now like on the like world cup and olympic circuit there's there's like sort of team result or like they're like end of the season like they do count up which teams did the best but it's definitely like a totally different environment and so that's why I like really latch on to my high school experience because that's I think what really made me or allowed me to be so dedicated and like because like right now I dedicate my whole life to it and I don't think I would be at this point in making all these sacrifices if I didn't have such like a good starting environment I guess. So there's it's funny we were talking about this for our Olympic zone show we have like kind of a Uh hard time coming up with content for the summer Olympics but the winter Olympics because we're in Maine there's so much more. Um, Yeah there's quite a few other Olympians from Maine have you like connected with them at all on social media or anything? Yeah only the only one I've like met in uh yeah, betting contact, or not a ton of contact is, um, Claire Egan, the biathlete, because we, or we didn't, never overlapped, but she skied for Cape, and my, my Yarmouth coach always likes to note that she came from Cape, and now, yeah, like, I did a ski camp with her earlier this year, and it was, yeah, that was the first time I really got to talking to her, but it was pretty cool to, like, have someone to, bond over even though our sports are a little bit different now um it was pretty cool to because like yeah the high school racing scene is so like distinct and just talking about like all the different race weekends that were such a big deal um it was pretty cool to talk to someone who has also made it so far